Hey everybody, what is going on? Brennan Miller here, back with another video. A while ago, actually, it was a decent amount of time ago, back in 2017, I made a video where I took a look at the cheapest rod and reel you could buy from Walmart, and it was this push button little rod and reel. It was called the Dock Demon. Needless to say, it turned out to be a piece of junk. Well, recently I was back in Walmart, just browsing around looking for stuff to buy. I know. I spend a lot of time in Walmart, don't judge. Of course, I was in the fishing section and I was looking at the spinning rod and reel combos and I thought to myself, you know, I have done a video about the cheapest push button rod and reel combo, but what about the cheapest spinning rod and reel combo you can buy from Walmart? So, I left Walmart with two spinning rod and reel combos. And today, we're gonna take a look at them and see if they're any good. So the first reel I picked up right here is the Zebco Slingshot rod and reel combo right here. And this is by far the cheapest rod and reel combo you can get at Walmart. It runs about $9.68. I also picked up this rod and reel combo right here. This is the Shakespeare Micro Series, and this one was a little more expensive. It ran me about 19 bucks. Those are the two rods and reels I picked up from Walmart. Let's see if they're any good. So upon first inspection, the Zebco Slingshot seems like a pretty standard cheap rod and reel setup. It has a basic plastic reel, which I gotta say actually feels fairly smooth. Um, you know, a lot of times when you buy these cheap reels, they kind of have a grinding sound, but this thing feels fairly smooth. However, I do hear a little bit of a noise in there, and I suspect the more you use this reel, the worse it will get, being as how it's a cheap plastic reel. Upon closer inspection, the drag does sound very, very cheap. The bail feels okay. Probably the most annoying thing about this reel right off the bat is the handle. It has a very small handle, and it's hard to grip, so that is one annoying thing. Moving on to the rod, we have a basic red rod made of fiberglass with little foam things on it. Now once you get this rod in the hand, there is one thing that is quite annoying about it. It has a very, very floppy tip and it does not feel very balanced. It's very, very heavy and feels quite clumsy. Even though these foam grips are pretty comfortable, uh, the rod just wants to kind of flop around in your hand and that is another thing that is very annoying. Alright, so my first impressions of the Zebco Slingshot is that it is a very, very cheap rod and reel, which is obvious given the price point. We're going to have to take this thing out in the water and see how it performs in order to draw a better conclusion. Moving on to the Shakespeare Micro Series, the key difference I noticed between this rod and the Zebco is the fact that this rod is just way lighter and way better built. As you can see, this rod is really well balanced in the hand, the grip feels really good, and it just feels like a proper fishing rod, whereas this rod feels really, really clumsy and heavy. Granted, these rods are two different lengths. This rod comes in at about four feet, six inches. That is a very, very tiny rod. Like I mentioned, the Zebco rod has a lot of flop in the tip of it, which makes it really annoying, and this little Shakespeare has some flop in here as well. But even with this being an ultralight rod and reel and the rod being super, super thin, the flop feels a lot more controlled than the Zebco. The Zebco just feels really cheap and out of control. I have been fishing with this ultralight rod and reel combo for a number of weeks, targeting fish like crappie and perch. And one of the problems I ran into right away after buying this was the fact that the drag stuck. You could not pull the drag. The drag would not move. It didn't matter how much you loosened this, this thing would not move. It was only yesterday when I was fiddling around with it, I, I just pulled really hard and something gave and the drag actually works now. But uh, up until that point, the drag was totally stuck. Thankfully, I was able to get this reel to work again, but this is kind of what you have to expect when you're using really cheap plastic reels like this. You're going to run into problems eventually once you start using them a bunch. The reel does have a fairly smooth action, although I can hear rubbing sounds in there. And like I said, these will these probably just get worse the more you use this reel. The bail feels pretty decent. The spool is made out of metal, which is kind of a good thing. And the handle does feel slightly better than the Zebco, although it still feels really cheap. I have talked about both these rods very in depth. Now it's time to take them out in the water and see how they perform. So I took the Zebco out to a local pond to see if I could catch some fish on it. And I fished and I fished and I fished and the fish were just not biting. It was really cold out and they didn't want to bite. So sadly, I wasn't able to catch a fish with the Zebco. However, I will say a couple of things that I noticed while using it. 
The first thing is, this thing casts really far. It is impressive. I can bomb a bait really, really far with this thing, and that's something I was not expecting at all. I thought this thing would be a pretty lousy caster, but I, but I was able to throw a bait fairly far, and that's something that's actually really cool. Um, something about the way this rod and wheel design makes it really easy to cast, and it casts very far and very effortless. Another downside I noticed with this reel was with the line that came pre-spooled on the reel. Uh, there was a number of times when I was trying to tie knots, and the knots would just break. So this line is very, very cheap, and I recommend and if you do get this thing, re-spool it with better line. Uh, usually the line that comes with these things is garbage. The biggest handicap with this rod and reel setup is the handling. Like I said, it is very, very front heavy. It's not balanced well. It feels very, very clumsy and awkward. Like I said, the rod just flops around. So if you're trying to uh, gently finesse a bait, the rod's like <laughs> flopping around and it's super annoying. Now moving on to the Shakespeare, I actually was able to catch some very large creek chubs uh, while I was fishing a creek the other day. So take a look at that. There we go. Oh my goodness. Got him. Goodness sakes. Oh, yes. Finally caught something, guys. Nice creek chub right there. Boom. That's a that's a that's a decent fish right there. Wow, I think he actually jumped. <laughs> nice, we're actually getting into some fish. Oh, where's the hit? Got him. Got him that time. Alrighty. Finally landed one. That's good. Another beautiful little creek chub. Hey, chill out, buddy. Right there. Calm down. Okay, back in the water. I gotta say, guys, fishing with small ultralights like this, even when you're catching creek chubs, is super fun. Having a light little rod like this, when you hook a fish, it feels awesome. It feels like you got something pretty substantial on there. And that's why I love fishing with ultralights, especially during the winter months, is I'm able to throw really small baits, and I'm able to really finesse them, and I love the small form factor. It is so much fun to use. But there are some downsides to using this little rod and reel combo. The first downside is casting. You are not able to cast very far with this thing compared to the other rod, that thing casts way better. And that obviously has something to do with the length of the rod. The Zebco is longer than this thing, but this thing also flops a lot, especially when you want to cast. It flops, and it makes casting accuracy a little bit of a challenge because it's got so much flop in the tip. So that is one thing that is annoying, but it's not a deal breaker. You can definitely work around it. I really love this rod reel for vertical jigging. It works very, very well. Overall, the rod is something that I really, really love, and I definitely will continue to use this rod in the future. Now, down to the reel. Now, when it comes to the reel, I gotta say I'm not that impressed. It's about the exact same quality as the other reel, even though it has some metal parts on it. Uh, the quality is just really, really cheap, and I'm pretty sure if you use this thing for a couple of months hardcore, it would eventually just break and stop working. So what's my final verdict on these two rod and reel combos? Which one is better for the money? Well, I gotta say, obviously the Shakespeare is going to be my pick for the best value. This thing is just a little bit clumsy. Now, I could see myself buying a couple of these if I was taking some beginners bluegill fishing in a pond or something, and I just wanted to have something that, that was cheap and that they could use and catch bluegill with. This will get the job done, but if you actually want to do some serious angling with it, uh, no. It is very, very clumsy, like I said, and it feels really, really cheap and the overall handling and performance is not that great. When it comes to the Shakespeare, I do think it is a better value for the money just for the rod alone. The rod is super nice. As a matter of fact, I'm not even gonna keep this reel on here going forward and put a new reel on it and continue to use this little ultralight because I really love fishing with an ultralight and this thing is very well made for the money. So there you go guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more videos where I do reviews of fishing lures, fishing rods, or other cheap stuff like that, let me know down in the comments below. If you wanna support the channel, be sure to check out my line of swim baits down in the description, as well as some merch that you can pick up and help support the channel as well. Thank you guys for watching this video, and as always, stay hooked. I'll see you later.